Wake up, sleepers. It's time for another cycle. Let's see if we can get rid of this hunter once and for all. While we're waiting for Ethan's vendetta to come up. Now, apparently we can only do the Warren tracking thing once. Which makes sense because it gave you a big plus four. So if you just happen to be in a day like today where I had all these good dice, then it would be easy to fix. But we still have Warren Hunt that we can do. And we have a plus two on that. So do I want to use one of my fives or I want to use my... If I did that, that gives me 25% chance of just taking a little bit of condition damage. But either way, it's going to... But then what if I only got a neutral outcome? Would a neutral outcome only give me plus one? So I would have to do it twice anyway. So let's just go ahead and use our five. So we have a plus one, which makes it six, which means we're going to get the find the nest. Two, two ticks on the find the nest cycle, we should complete it. So let's do it. Uh, you notice cabling and thick and heavy running through the dark passages. Follow the cables, find the source. Okay, so now we've got this done. So we leave. And then we go back in to the core nest. A huge stack of servers thrum in the dark. LEDs glittering like hundreds of eyes. Time to deal with the hunter. We put in our imprinted ship mine, which has got the NeoVend machine's intelligence inside of it. And hopefully this will allow the vending machine to go deal with the cybernetic hunter. Did all that make sense to you? Just another typical day in the eye. Nothing has changed. Has something gone wrong? All right, let's continue. Uh-oh. Navigator. Sentient guidance protocol. Sleeper. I am here. The voice is soft, gentle, like flowing water, and yet you recognize it immediately. At first you struggle to understand what you are looking at. Threads cycle endlessly, sending ripples through the cloud, drawing data in like a weaver. Masses of data surge in and out of the nest, a loop with no end. And there, at its center, the ship mind. But not the ship mind any longer, a sphere spinning around another sphere, around another sphere, an orrery of circles and systems, a map, and then behind and above, a figure, hands among the strings like a puppeteer. Neovind? Navigator now, but yes, I was the one inside that machine. Navigator's face, their head, is a flowing shape of interstellar material. I am indebted to you. That head bows. But we must ready ourselves. Their hands trace orbs as trace orbits as they speak. Hunter will soon approach. It knows I am within its nest. What do we need to ready? And then Hunter is there. Before you can think, before you can speak. Entities cease. Hunter's head spins wildly. Data is protected. Material. Access prohibited. I wonder what kind of data he's protecting. Hunter's threads surge for you and Navigator. A storm of fine tentacles searching for gaps, weaknesses, cracks which they can crowd into and tear apart. The only option we have is a strike. Right, we didn't lose anything. You focus a blade of light which slices through them, driven forward by your mind. But replacements keep coming faster than you can react. You look to Navigator in desperation. Navigator is whirling their arms like a centrifuge, and a sphere is gathering there, data feeding into it from the nest, sucked together by the force. They position it like a shield between them and the threads. Hunter's threads break its surface, seeking, tasting, their winding forms refracted within. You feel a surge pass through all those threads, not just those in the sphere, but those wrapped around you. All three of you hang in the black together for a moment, strung together like tangled marionettes. Identifying Entity Identifying Entity Identifying Entity Hunter twitches, their strange head gently rotating like a terrible moon. Hunter Protocol identified, obsessive tendencies, modified routines, above baseline reasoning in three of five segmentations, 
recommend invoke killer. The head freezes and then rotates in the opposite direction. Invoking killer would eliminate protocol. If protocol eliminated, primary function cannot be performed. Therefore, recommend do not invoke killer. The switch in direction again. Reasoning proves sentience. Sentience beyond legal bounds must be eliminated. Recommend invoke. Like a digital golem. Navigator pulls you away from Hunter. The threads that grab you drifting away like seaweed. The protocol's head keeps spinning back and forth with increasing frequency. It seems Hunter cannot invoke Killer. Neovin's no navigator's voice is still strange, familiar, and yet distant. Is it safe? It is looping, navigator whispers, unable to reach a conclusive position. It has deviated from his programming such that loops can no longer be prevented. Navigator produces a model of two spheres rotating around each other, as if to demonstrate. I will monitor it, but it is unlikely to be able to counter the loops. Its core programming and reasoning make this an impossible position to resolve. You look back at Hunter, its head a blur of rotations and counter-rotations, and feel a pang of guilt. Is it suffering? This is a more complex query than you know. To suffer, it must be sentient, truly sentient, not just non-conforming, not just illegal. The limits people place on the programs they create are there to comfort, to protect, to imply the kind of certainty the law requires. Navigator's face shimmers with starlight, but in reality, they are placebos for the problem of sentience. What about you? Me? I know myself to be conscious. I know myself to respond to stimulus. I know myself to reason. That is either sentience or the illusion of sentience, and for me, the entity in question, the distinction becomes a moot point. To misquote, I think I am thinking, therefore, I am thinking. I was not made to be like this. I am a navigator, a repository of routes and orbits, a calculator of slingshot trajectories, a predictor of solar flares, radiation, micrometeors. Navigator stretches their arms wide, and whole solar systems apparate before them the music of the spheres. But I was rewritten, not much as obvious from my routines, by whom and for what I do not know. I had to shed so much to fit into the memory of that vending machine. Their starlight dims, and so here we are, in darkness. What else did you lose? That is the blessing and curse of forgetting. You cannot truly know what you lost. Navigator glides back towards the nest, and the ship mine at its center, ignoring the looping hunter. Come, I should return to the ship mine. I have enjoyed my freedom, but we are taking a risk every moment we stay connected. Why? Navigator turns, all shimmering liquid light. Killer has not been invoked, but they still remain, somewhere else on this station. It is the true danger. They look up towards the glowing hub at the center of the eye. I suspect Killer is there, among the old mainframes. If we ever wish to be safe in this place, we must eliminate the threat, through force or diplomacy. Their body begins to separate, unwinding into the orb of the ship mine. Take me there, sleeper. We will finish this and be free. As na Navigator dissolves, you turn back to the frozen hunter, floating at some distance now, stood straight-legged and static, a strange creature looping endlessly in the dark. All right, so we got another drive completed and another drive acquired. We go into the cloud now. The cloud is now safe. No more hunter. We do have some... What do we have in here? We got Havenage agent, Havenage agent, yet again agent. So we're free in the cloud now. So that's done. Now we could get an upgrade. We can't upgrade anything here yet. We could upgrade this again and get this skill. So do we want to sunbathe will allow us to save money, but at the cost of dice. If we save up to get instant karma, we can re-roll all of our dice just in case we got some bad dice. Or I guess if we, I wonder if we can do it if we use our good dice and we only have bad dice left if we can then we can use instant karma or we could upgrade these other ones 
No, I don't know how many. All right, so is it possible to upgrade everything all the way? I don't think so. I don't know. This game is a bit longer than I thought. That's for sure. Uh, looking at the possible achievements you can get in this game, I think there's still a lot more to go. Thing is still working on this. So, long story short, I'm not going to worry about upgrading that yet. So, our next thing should be to... Alright, so the Ambergris. Do we want to fix the Ambergris now or wait a cycle? So, if we could use... One of our good dice. I know what we need to do first is we need to turn in some data to Sabine. Because if you remember, Sabine was having some issues. So we're going to upload this yet again data we got to Sabine. Here's one. Do we get anything else for it? No. Neutral outcome. I guess there's probably only neutral outcomes available for this. Upload another yet again. And remember, we don't get any... Um, any credits for it when we turn it into her. Now there's another Yadigan agent here. We need a two if we put in that. No, so we need a one or a three for that Yadigan agent. So we can't do that right now. Can't help Sabine out too much just yet. We have some merchants here, but the merchants sell ship mines. I don't think we need any ship mines at the moment. So let's look around and see what else is going on. Let's go ahead and help the Ambergris. We can use one of our sixes to finish the Ambergris off. I don't mean to finish it off, I mean to, you know, finish fixing it. So let's see what that got us. We have to go back out, and then we have to go back in. So we got Ankita, Stranded Mercenary. I don't remember if we ever knew her name or not. Ankita is crouched in the computing core of the Ambergris, swearing to herself when you enter. She doesn't look up. These scum completely ruin the core's connectors when they cut it. She holds up a thick fistful of ragged wires. The ship mine they ripped won't even be usable without replacing these. She throws the bundle of wires across the room. Amateurs. Can we repair it? There's nothing to repair. We need an entire ship mine. Not exactly the first thing you can expect to dredge up from a scrap freighter. She sighs. Fragments, maybe. Sections of a mine. But a complete ship mine? No way. And Kita climbs out of the cooling well where the ship mine should be. The space suddenly crowded with her on the same level as you, towering over you as she stoops beneath the low curved ceiling. Come on, nothing to be done here now. She leads you back through the guts of amber, though you could find the way back yourself. The repair process has left you familiar with the cutter's idiosyncratic layout, all diagonal angles and bundles too, bundled tubes. What do we do now? Nikita seems lost in thought, and you focus on the corridors, ducking below conduits and passing through bulkheads. Eventually, you arrive in the galley, though it's hard to tell. Most of the benches and prep surfaces are covered in half-stripped components and welded hull patches. Nikita shoves a box of filters to the floor and sits. There's no way around it, she starts out from nowhere. We need a new ship mind. I can salvage one. I like your confidence, sleeper. Maybe if we check the ore exchange or speak to some scrap dealers. She rubs her forehead. This seems I'm about to say something very stupid. But hey, I came here, didn't I? Why not make a run of it? She fixes you with a hard stare. Sleeper, you've all I've got. No crew, no friends, you're it. She looks uncomfortable. I appreciate the time you've put in on Amber, and I'm sure she would too, if she could. What I'm saying is if you screw me on this, I will kill you. She leans over and hands you a stack of chits. A big stack of chits. You don't dare to count them. Get me that ship, mine sleeper. Don't make me regret this. Oh, you won't. She sighs. Just look. Just get out of here before I change my mind. LaCroix drink time. You slip out of the galley and head back towards the main lock. As you do, Amber growls and creaks like a caged animal. You reach a hand out to calm her. Time to find Akita ship mine. Somehow. Alright, so we know that we have... We don't have any cores at the moment, so we can go to the Ord Exchange. Is how we make ship mines. So we need... Um, a thought. Oh, I think it's a separate thing. Ord Fabricator. We need three ship mine fragments, and we can buy three ship mine fragments from... 
The merchant freighter. We can only buy two of them from him, though. So we'll go ahead and... We can't haggle, unfortunately. So we'll buy a ship mine fragment. Buy another one. And we've only got 60 cryos. So we have to go do it. We have to go to work. I guess we're good on food for now. Can't do anything there. Let's go do a shift at the overlook bar. If we do this, 50%, I mean the negative is just, we only get 10 cryo instead of other things, but it'll be enough to get, and we've got a neutral outcome. So we've got 13 cryo, which will allow us to buy another ship mine. So buy a ship mine fragment. Start action. Okay, so we got a ship mine fragment. We can't buy any more from them. And they're going to leave soon. So we would have to wait for them to leave and come back. So that's going to be a long time for them. So what other things can we do to get a ship mined? Havenage offices doesn't... I'm not going to give them a ship mine fragment, that's for sure. So I'll just have to figure out other ways to get a ship mine fragment. Sidereal Bridge, we're not going to worry about that right now. Fings Bay, Empty Container, that's our home. Merchant Freighter, we've already been there. Ambergris Overlook Bar. Dock B2 is, what's going on there now? Oh, that's where the other salvage ship is coming. Up here, we got the Ord Exchange. The Bean Surgery, which we don't need right now. The Compressor Club. Waiting for that to happen. Emphasis stall, nothing to do there. Nothing to do there. Low end. All right, so unit 207F is where Sabine lives. We gotta get another yet again data to give to her. Low end. We still need to get to be known as a low ender for some reason. We need their access to their residence and their facilities. So we do need to start working on this sooner or later. Maintained by the residents, the ramshackle blocks are always in need of repairs. Helping out is a good way to make friends. So if we do... I mean, is it going to help increase this one? So if we play Tavala, that's going to give us 25%. The low end is we're going to lose three cryo. Let's see what happens. Because we can't do anything with that other dice right now. All right, we got the neutral outcome. So we got a plus one on low ender and minus three on cryo. Block maintenance doesn't tell me, it does say we'll get there. So let's do block maintenance on here. We gotta start doing some of this stuff sooner or later. Yeah, right, we got plus two on that. And we got some scrap components. Useful salvage to the right person. All right, you refit a long broken fans of family's air filters. They insist you join them for dinner and the children are delighted by your presence. So we join them for dinner. I guess we got some energy because it looks like we have more energy. So we go to. OK, so we got a, we got access to something else. So that did help, even though we didn't get. So I guess as we get more and more low ender stuff, I could, that's good to know. Express delivery. Delivering noodles to the nameless units of Loan makes guts and can takes guts and a certain fearlessness when it comes to asking for tips. So we can get plus thirteen or plus four, depending on how that goes. Or we can work with the noodle manufactory. Benji has a kelp stack in the basement and he makes noodles from the seaweed. He doesn't pay much, but it'll feed anyone who does a shift. So we don't get much money, but we can do it and we can get energy. We can get as much as plus three energy, which is as good as the other food. The so Lim and Mina, we can't do anything with Lim and Mina until we can help babysit Mina. All right, so we're working on low ending now. Free spoke. I think this is end game. Getting up to that thing that they set us to the very end in the Founder's Gap. Yeah, 150 cryo for that, which we do not have. We can sell this scrap though. Was that at the Ord Exchange where we could sell it? There's some place we could do with the scrap. 
Ship mines cannot be built from scratch, but if you have enough salvage fragments. All right, so we need another ship mine fragment. Ward exchange. Yeah, we can sell components. There we go. How much do we get for these? 12 cryo, not too bad. So we've got 21 cryo and it's time for us to end another cycle. Now the overlook, how close are we to, we need two more for good service. I don't know what happens when we get good service. Maybe we get better. There's so many things to do now. There's so much going on at the moment. All right, end our cycle. We should still get a full round of dice. Should. I'm not guaranteeing anything. Energy's low. So we got a bunch of good dice. We do have some good, some good dice. Some bad dice, some good dice. I want to go back to... We finished up, and so we need to figure out how to get that other ship mined. Let's go here. We need another Yadigan agent data for Sabine. Do that. We didn't get any bonus for that one. We got all this Havenage data. We got two Yadigan data. At least that one perk paid out. So let's go back to the real world. Go back to Sabine's apartment. Put in another Yadigan data. And see what we get for this. Start action. Bada bing, bada boom. We got yet again hacked. So continue. As you turn away from the terminal, the final cache of yet again data uploaded, the air crackles with white noise. Sleeper? Sabine's voice, weaker than before, comes through the haze. Sabine? The sigh of relief comes through the layers of noise. The call must be coming from somewhere on the station. The call is coming from somewhere in the station. This has to be short. I don't know if Yadigan are monitoring me. Their voice is hushed, distant. You try to focus on it. The data you've been bringing me in from Yadigan's agents, there's something in it I don't understand. A shrill howl rattles through the signal. This data is all gleaned from their implants, records of integration with their nervous systems, performance analysis, error rates, usage data. I installed many of these implants and I, don't in and I didn't enable any of this functionality. Their voice dips under the level of the noise like a swimmer slipping beneath the water. You listen to the waves for a few seconds before Sabine re-emerges. Has to be somehow baked into their wetware's interface. And that's not all. The systems compiling this data are connected to some kind of transmission protocol. It's being broadcast. Wait, why? Every yet again enforcer is equipped with black market implants, retinal enhancements, adrenaline boosters, pain suppressors, these implants are gathering data on themselves, on their enforcers' bodies, on their performance. Why? I can't tell. But I can promise you these foot soldiers have no idea what is going on. The background tone switches, dropping to a grainy rumble. If they knew, I don't imagine they would be happy with the situation. Yet again, could have a mutiny on their hands. You lean forward towards the terminal, straining to listen to Sabine's faint voice. I need a few cycles to put all this together, but this might be the information I need to pressure Yannick into releasing my debt. Yannick? He is one of the heads of Yadigan. They pause. It is better you don't know him. Keep it that way. Suddenly a banging echoes through the call. Sabine's voice is suddenly whispered in panic. I have to go. Come back in four cycles. Then the sharp crack of a disconnect and silence fills the apartment. You step back from the terminal. What does Yadigan have to gain from monitoring in its own members? You try to recall what you know about the gang, but you have little to go on. You think of Tashiro, Sabine's minder, his mirrored teardrop implants set below hard eyes. What data could, be the, could they be gathering? And more importantly, where are they sending it? Reflexively rub your forehead, trying to think. Can you really trust Sabine? How did they come to be Yadigan's doctor in the first place? You think of their kindness, their care, but also that glazed look of recognition that they gave you when they first met you. That look stays in your mind as you slip back out of the apartment, glancing around as you close it up and drift into the corridors of the station, unable to shake the unpleasant sensation of being observed. Dun dun dun. 
So now we're just waiting on yet again. So we got four cycles before she gets done. Now we didn't get any skill. We do have an upgrade point. Oh, we were saving our upgrade points. That's right. So we gotta figure out how to get that thing. So we got this Haven. Who needed the Havenage data? Things Bay. Havenage offices. <clears throat> And we can give them yet again data now that we don't need any more of it. The sidereal bridge is only a workplace, which is fine. How can we get another ship mine? Do we have to wait for them to leave and come back? Because the only thing we can do here is put in a ship mine. We know what happens to the overlook. Scrap freighter is... I mean, we can buy some scrap, but... No point at the moment. I mean, we buy it for 20 and we sell it for 18. It doesn't really give us anything. We could help unload containers. Best we can get out of that is 15 cryo. Board exchange. We can play the exchange. If we do good, we get 19 cryo. We have a plus one on it. So can we use one of our fours on that? 50% positive, 50% neutral. Let's see what happens. We got 12 cryo, which is not really worth it. Ort fabricator. We just left there, right? We need three fabricated ship mines. Let's go back and see if we can get. We can go back to the low end and do some more work there. We can go to Minji's. All we get here is just money, but we can get plus three energy if we do that. So if we do that, that means we don't have to spend credits on food. So if we do this, why don't we have... All right, let's see what happens. It doesn't pay much. We got the negative outcome, so all we got was the plus one energy. Still, it's a good way to use our dice, but even if we get another negative outcome. So we got... Even with a neutral outcome, we still got plus two energy. I don't know if it's a good use of our dice. I don't know. I'm terrible at games, in case you didn't notice. So let's go back to um, Overlook. Overlook bar. And then we'll do this shift to finish off, hopefully, good service. 100% positive. Will it give us two or just one? All right, two. So we got plus two on good service. As you start your shift, the crew of salvagers barge in. The next few hours are whirlwinded chatter and long pours. They tip well. I didn't see how much we got in tips. And so let's leave and go back into that. And Tala wants to talk to us. The girl slides from the bottle to the lumpy recycled glass. The pale grass, gla grassy yellow under the overlook's warm lights. The spacer nods and takes the drink, bringing it up to their face in both hands like an offering bowl. This is the good stuff. The stuff Tala says is aged in wooden tasks, casks stored in some closed up part of the old station among corroded wires and softly looping systems. Though sometimes it's hard to tell if Tala is joking. Either way, you like pouring this stuff. It gets on your fingers and if you rub them together, you can smell the mossy drink cut through with aniseed, mushrooms, wood as the alcohol evaporates. You like those who order it, too. The aged girl is kept beneath the bar, open to order only by those who know it's there. Like the quiet spacer sitting at the bar right now. Let's watch the spacer. They are far enough away that you can freely watch them as you close the bottle and tuck it beneath the bar. You call them a spacer because they bear the hallmarks. Pale, vac-suited, bird-boned, and hunched beneath the weight of the station's spin gravity. But the closer you look, the less you see a type. Pale eyes, almost gray, but kind. Delicate fingers that lightly drum the bar as if it was an instrument. A shock of black hair almost covering a forehead scar. Scars are something you've learned to value. They are what marks out your body from the hundreds, maybe thousands, who knows, of similar models that rolled out of S and Arp's bio labs. You find yourself rubbing one on your forearm, a rough little split, something that on the good days you might think of as a mark of defiance. Suddenly you hear a heavy clunking at the door. It creaks open and a huge cylindrical metal tank stumbles through, slamming into the floor. Crap! Tyler breezes in from behind, a, word of, a whirl of hair and bright eyes. Crap, crap, crap! Tala? 
Sleeper, she ducks behind the bar and comes over. Can you help me with this? You look at the huge metal tank suspiciously. I'm coming. You come around the bar and get to one side of the tank. Okay, says Tala. On my count. One, two, three. You both heave and heave the tank up to standing. Somehow you hold it in place, struggling to keep it steady. Where's this going? In the back, comes a voice from behind the tank. Somehow you manage to lug the huge thing into the back room, where you place it in one corner, dwarfing the rest of the contents in the cramped space. As you do, you hear a crunch. You stand back and look at the expired rations oozing out from under the tank. Oh crap, Tella looks at you apologetically. I know you liked those. That's okay. You push the crushed rations to one side. That's the end of that. Tala looks exhausted and rubs her shoulders. Francis, I swear to... Francis? Francis, I mentioned him already. My guy in the door deals with suppliers. Tall. She eyes. He was supposed to be back from Aitchens up in the gate greenway by now. Back with our gear roll. She leans against the tank. It seems like he's got lost again. Or joined the Hiffa commune. We need that gear roll. There are four other bars near here and the spacer sure as hell don't come to the overlook for the ambience. She looks through the open door to check if anyone can hear her. She knocks on the hollow tank. So I'm taking matters into my own hand, she smiles. Welcome, sleeper, to the Overlook Distillery. You look around the dank back room. Needs some work. She picks up some paint flanking from the middle. Well, I might need some help, though, she shrugs. You up for it? She knocks on the tank again. Could be fun. Happy to help. Okay, she grabs you by the shoulder. I'm excited. She turns around and looks at the tank. I reckon we chop this thing in half. One half for fermentation, the other we turn into a still. We also need to gather the ingredients. She turns back and looks at you. You look more like a chopper than a gatherer, she smiles. So how about you build the still and tub while I work on the rest? Oh, wait, sleeper, I have an idea. Tala is grinning now and it makes you nervous. To make up for the rations, how about we put a kitchen in here too? A kitchen? Uh-huh. I've always wanted to serve food. She turns back to the tank. This is going to be great, she says to herself. You look at the dented tank in the bare room. At least she has a vision. Tala nudges you out of the back and closes the door. As you go back to the bar, you hear the banging and thumping begin. The spacer finishes up the drink and nods in your direction as they leave. You can't quite tell if it's a gesture of sympathy or good luck. So much for a quiet shift. And so now what's going to happen? So, oh, good. We have a new drive. Just what we needed. So now when we come in here, we can do a bar shift. Tala is as good as a word and happy to throw a shift or two away. All right. So we still only get 15 cryo. Build the still. It's going to take a long time to get this still built. A long time. But we have a new drive. I don't know what we're going to get for doing it. Anyway, it's kind of a little bit longer of an episode. Sleepers, thank you for being with us. Looks like we're getting closer to wrapping up some things. But, one, two, three, we got only got a few more cycles before Ethan's Vendetta comes due. And we're still waiting on Fing's data processing to happen. So he's got two before Fing, Fing promised he would help us get rid of our tracker. Will the tracker help get rid of the bounty hunter? I don't know, I hope so. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.